After studying the charts all night long, I have found that there are significant similarities actually between what we're seeing this summer and pretty much all summers in Bitcoin's past, especially when we kind of document uh, some significant events that accompany these summers, which will be the focus of today's video. As you can see, there is no face camera for today. I'm actually setting up my new computer, and for whatever reason, I can't figure out how to make my camera work, so I think I need to go to the store and, uh, and get some new equipment. But other than that, we can just jump right into this one, although I should let you know that all of the programs and services that you can see right here in front of your face are going to be going on sale starting next week. So if you're interested in any of them, uh, just wait a few days, wait a few days, save yourself a few bucks and um, yeah, all good. Okay. So let's start off with first a revisiting actually of yesterday's analysis. We were saying, Hey, Bitcoin likely range bound for the day, likely going to play out some move between the average ranges that we did see on the daily price statistics. And that's pretty much exactly what we got. We said to the downside, likely another test somewhere around yesterday or the day prior to low. We got that on a tick down to about 58,000 bucks here. But Bitcoin closed in the day more or less unchanged. And today, Thursday, I expect that we're probably going to see something relatively similar here too. Thursday, slightly weighted in favor of negative closures versus positive closures. You can see, but there is an overweight actually in terms of the positive gaining Thursdays versus the negative gaining Thursdays, meaning that the positive gaining Thursdays have gained an average of about two spot 39% and the losing Thursdays have lost an average of a little bit over one and a half percent. So let's look at what that would kind of correlate to in terms of a range shaving off about one and a half percent to the downside would put Bitcoin on a retest of, you know, slightly around yesterday's low, uh, perhaps a little bit less at very low $58,000. I do expect that that is, uh, you know, very much within the cars today as well. And of course, to the upside, if Bitcoin were to play at about a two, almost a two and a half percent move to the upside, that would actually put Bitcoin back above 60,000 bucks yet again. Uh, but still, I suspect that we're not going to see anything, you know, significant here. No major breakouts, no major breakdowns, just continuing sideways, especially as we get into the rest of this analysis, which I'm actually going to go into exactly right now. So here's the thing. <clears throat> Bitcoin uh, and cryptocurrency and, and and most markets for that matter, actually, um, typically go into a bit of a lull over the summer, um, the, you know, the summer spread. And that's exactly what we've seen here, too. Um, you can see Bitcoin ever since about June slash July has has wedged itself into this range between about seventy thousand bucks the upside versus on a closing basis about uh, you know fifty five to the downside, and in this case you can see Bitcoin is you know more or less right in the middle of that weekly range, and what's interesting to me is that this range from you know from high to low essentially would be almost thirty percent thirty percent in terms of price action. Well, I've gone through the history of Bitcoin here and found let me just make sure that I'm actually uh, pressing the right thing there we go um, and found that all prior times that we've gone through summers, uh, you know, through those months around June, July to September slash October, we've seen very similar ranges actually for price action. I've highlighted it with the blue boxes here. And as you can see, we have this one from 2023, rhymes as well, but, uh, but this, this, this range, very similar, um, almost 28% from top to bottom. The year before that, very, very similar here yet again, 29 spot 29% before the actual move at the end of summer, again, this range basically held until October, as did the one over here as well, uh, basically into early October. And of course, the summer before that in 2021, same shit, 30% range right here. Again, holding th this one actually breaking out uh, a little bit earlier than the other ones. This one breaking out in about early August, but uh, a 30% range right there. Very interesting. Going on to the next one, we do see in 2020, same shit. Bitcoin wedged itself into this range July to basically uh, September slash October. I could probably take uh, Take that out a little bit more. And as you can see, almost a 27% range. Same thing over here, 2019, almost 26% range. Same thing over here, 30% range, 25% range almost. We see another 20, 26% range right here, 31% range, 32% range, 33, and so on and so forth. Uh, we actually have a couple more over here. This one, this, 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 this one actually rather large, uh, 34%. Uh, back in 2012, but of course, Bitcoin was a little bit younger during that time. So, you know, likely, uh, you know, volatility is just going to be higher just to kind of represent the the extreme uh, moves that were going on during that time due to the lack of liquidity. Anyways, um, I've calculated all of those prior ranges and found that on average from, you know, that late summer, uh, again, let's say like July to late September slash early October, the average range was about 29 and a quarter percent which is very, very similar to what we're seeing right here as well. Thus far, 
you know, the average of this range, uh, just under 30%. So I did think that that was rather interesting uh, because one, it is historically relevant and two, it correlates incredibly well with what we've seen in the past. Now, taking this um, a couple steps further, I have outlined here with the cyan, the, this, this color right here, um, vertical lines, past halvings in Bitcoin's uh, history, which that leading into the, um, you know, that late summer portion, again, very, very similar price action here. You can see in the last one in 2020, this one actually did happen a little bit, uh, you know, before that. But again, you know, this, perce this preceded that sort of sideways period where things did, you know, have some pumps and dumps in between, but ultimately the weekly continued to set in higher lows. And that is the, that is the prevailing feature of this same shit over here in 2016, we see Bitcoin wedge itself into this range after the halving. And then around uh, this one actually went on for a little bit longer into uh, middle of October, you know, started to crawl its way outside of that range to the upside again, putting in significant higher lows on the weekly timeframe the whole way through. And then of course the one back in 2012, this one actually, again, preceding the summer range a little bit further, but same, you know, same sort of interpretation right there. On top of that, what I've done is I've, uh, is, uh, is I've overlaid these red vertical bars here. And if I bring up my drawing tools, you'll notice that these red vertical bars correlate to the weekly stochastic momentum uh, pivots around the end of summer. And what you'll notice is, is that the one or sorry, the ones um, that uh, that basically see momentum on the weekly turn back onto the upside result in upside price action, as you might guess. Uh, you know, we have this one right here, obviously. This one over here was still down, so that was a good indication that this one would continue down. Also, it did have lower highs the whole way through. This one over here, again, similar. We do see uh, the weekly stochastic also to cross the upside, and then boom, big price action to the upside. Same shit over here. Same shit over here, same shit over here, same shit over here and over here yet again. In fact, even the positioning of the weekly stochastic oscillator um, around this green vertical bar, which I will zoom in right now, uh, this th this specific area also correlated really, really well um, when seeing stochastic momentum cross back onto the upside around this region uh, with that follow through again to the upside. So, you know, I'm still looking at this as likely to drag on probably into to deep September, um, maybe even early October. It's very possible. Uh, but the more that it goes sideways here, you know, the more that these oscillators will have a chance to reset and, you know, that will likely give the opportunity for the boo laws to take back on over. Um, so that is kind of what I've uh, wanted to remind myself throughout this current corrective period that we do see on Bitcoin, not to get too emotional on major moves to the upside nor to the downside, because at the end of the day, we're unlikely to see this range break at least until September. I mean, you know, uh, well, to be fair, I mean, it is only another couple of days until September does begin, of course. But um, but still, you know, in, into like mid it, mid September minimum, I would say, uh, slash at most perhaps early October. Um, we do expect this to kind of continue on sideways here. And if we don't really see any major breaks, then, you know, this will allow things to reset and, and have a bullish bias, actually. It's just, you know, how much longer can people... Uh, how much longer can people mentally deal with going sideways uh, without any sort of major price action breaks? I mean, that's that's really what <laughs> I mean. That is capitulation uh, by boredom at the end of the day. Anyways, moving on from there, um, I did want to just quickly go over. Let me just make sure that we're good on time. Yes, we are good on time. Um, I just want to quickly go over the HPDR ranges. Uh, we can see that on the weekly here. Bitcoin has caught hold of the median here for CME. Again, not really going to be able to make too much out of this. Just kind of, you know, showing us, uh, you know, the likely range for this week. Um, of course, we go over here to spot price action. I think this one actually uh, works out a little bit better. Downside, you know, likely capped around about 57,000 bucks. We've kind of already seen a move like that. Upside, very likely capped around 65, which, I mean, obviously this week opened up around 65 and quickly rejected <laughs> from there as well. Um, so at the end of the day, you know, just looking at it right here, I mean, this is this 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 to me is a signature of of boredom and coming and likely to continue um, at least until next week. Um, but uh, but again, you know, Bitcoin likely holding sideways here. And of course, if I'm just going to be um, providing some some perhaps guidance, maybe that's a bad word to be using. But uh, in this case, you know, the 12 hour setup and the daily setup, which did have a pretty damn good trade uh, over last week. Um, there's really nothing, you know, nothing 
nothing to be excited about here, especially as long as Bitcoin's closing below that five exponential, this red moving average right here. Um, if and when Bitcoin does close back above it, it will very likely initiate the conditions for the next um, uh, potential upside move. But until that happens, you know, I, I don't think that there's any major rush to be jumping into positions or anything like that. Um, you know, probability is probably not still on your side at that moment. So, you know, going back to the daily, this, you know, the red five is pretty much around the same area, about 60,400 or so. If we go to the strategy tester again, this actually does have a higher probability to lose trades than than win trades over the full history of Bitcoin. Um, but all major moves have been sparked upon, or sorry, have, have, have been sparked by Bitcoin reclaiming that major move in average and then typically riding it for a while. So that's why we're interested in it because if and when Bitcoin does reclaim it, you know, there's typically a nice trade there, and uh, or at least a nice um, risk reward setup there, and uh, and you know the big moves uh, typically do you know typically do follow that. So um, keep uh, you know I'll be keeping my eyes on this, and of course I'll continue to update on this uh, on these videos. Um, just know that, uh, yeah, and, and you know, in, in, until that is reclaimed, I wouldn't be expecting any sort of like sustained upside price action, obviously, and still likely range bound here just below 60,000 bucks. So, yeah, that's going to do it for today's video. I am going to run to the store, figure out what the fuck I need to get in order to make this damn camera work, but I'm very excited about this new computer as well. And uh, with all of that said, I'd like to wish you the best, best as always. Take care, much love, and see you hopefully tomorrow.